All right. How else do I condition my mind for money or for whatever I want? You condition your mind for whatever you want by loving the good which you desire. And yes, I'm going to say point blank, if you really want to have a good experience with money, you have to learn how to love money positively and correctly. Now there I said it, Paul. <laughs> yes, he does hear me. Yeah, he had to straighten Peter out and I had to straighten him out, you see. I want to say this again and I'm going to spend some time on this because this is a touchy area and this is where religious people lose out with the money thing. You have to love the good which you desire positively and correctly. So if you really want to balance successful relationship with money, you have to love money positively and correctly. But you notice in all of my prayer treatments about money, I'm always careful to say what? I do not serve money. Money serves me. You see, and that's the balance. That's the trick. You see, now once you start serving money, that's where the evil comes in. As a matter of fact, once you start serving anything, that's where the evil comes in. But everything should be loved in its place. And I was so glad to come upon that Irish proverb some time ago which I shared with you. And money swore an oath that anyone who did not love her should never have her. And you know, I did those sermons like money is a woman. And you're going to have to make to have money and to, to money condition your mind. You are going to have to come to peace with money in your mind. If you don't come to peace with money in your mind, you're going to have money troubles. If there is the slightest subconscious feeling that maybe money is dirty. You know, maybe it is evil. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't have much of it. Money will know it. And will oblige your attitude. <laughs> religious people have such hang-ups about money that people, in, in some religious orders, people take the vow of poverty. There's somebody laughing who's glad that they renounced the vow of poverty. <laughs> I'm poor for Christ's sake. If you are a child of God, it is impossible for you to be poor. How can a child of the infinite have lack? Not if you have the right understanding. So I've taken a vow, I've taken the vow of wealth. <laughs> I swear I'm through with poverty. <laughs> and they'd say on the street, I swear to God I had enough of it. <laughs> Be sure you keep your relationship with money balanced. And you must let money know, point blank, that you love it, and that you understand what the relationship is. And you must get to that point so that money loves you. You see, that's, when you're, that's a point when your mind is really money conditioned, when you get to this point so that money loves you and just won't stay away from you. Every time you look around, here it comes. The more you use it, the more it comes. The more you enjoy it, the more it comes. See, that's another thing. You see, get in the habit of enjoying your money. 
Not simply in big ways. Some of you are saying, I'm just waiting until I get me a whole lot of money. Then I'm going to do this, that, and the other. Start right now enjoying your money in so many little ways. If you, if you buy yourself a five-cent piece of candy, make it your particular business to enjoy it. Coming through the toll gate here the other day, I noticed it had gone up from a dime when we first moved to this building to 50 cents. And the intellect started to grumble, and then I reminded the intellect, ah, you remember what Reverend Ike said. <laughs> Reverend Ike says, instead of grumbling about these prices, say, I give thanks for money to buy whatever I need. So I said, I give thanks for this 50 cents to put in here. So I want you to start learning how to enjoy your money even in small ways. Whenever you use money, if it's to get on the bus or the subway, enjoy it. Enjoy the fact that, well, I, I have this 50 cents or this 75 cents. I have this 15 cents for a package of chewing gum. And I'm enjoying this. And you see, if you learn how to enjoy money, you establish a love affair with money, and then money will love you. And stop packing back money that f for rainy days. <laughs> you know, I've told you about that time and time again, because you see, if you're saving for rainy days, you have given your mind an order, let it rain. And I told you about the minister, and this is not just a parable, this is a fact also. A young man who had some type of illness and went to the hospital, and so when he got out, he said, you know, I sure learned a lesson that time. He said, I didn't save up any money. He said, when I get up from here and I go back to work, I'm going to save up some money so that the next time I get sick and go to the hospital, I'll have some money. <laughs> so he got well and went back to work and worked like hell and saved up his money so that the next time he got sick he went to the hospital he'd have some money and sure enough the next time he got sick and he went back and he had he said oh my god it sure is good I saved up this money to help pay my doctor bill and so he got up from there again and he worked like hell again to get some more money to save up so that when he got sick and went back to the hospital <laughs> and he did that the third time he said now wait a minute <laughs> you see what he was conditioning himself for? What was he conditioning himself for? To get sick and go to the hospital. <laughs> and if you condition yourself for these negatives, it's like that old doleful hymn used to say, that awful day shall surely come. <laughs> that appointed hour makes haste. <laughs> <laughs> so he was getting he realized what he was conditioning his mind for now I'm not talking about throwing your money away you should have some extra money and everybody should have some money making money as I told you if it only starts with a five dollar savings certificate and be sure that every one of your kids has some kind of an interest bearing account Immediately after the birth certificate, get a savings certificate. Immediately. Don't let the ink dry on the birth certificate before you get an interest-bearing certificate. If you're going to give a gift to a newborn baby, that's a good thing to give. And fix it so the mom and daddy can't cash it. If you want to give it, give it and hold it in trust. Because on the subconscious level, this will give the infant, the child, prosperity vibrations. Because we all learn more, and children, of course, learn more by the subconscious process than by the conscious process anyway. 
a lot of the things that we have accepted as fact, we, we really do not consciously know when we accepted it. Like most people, for example, don't know the moment when they decided that someday they're going to kick the bucket. Yet every one of you are thoroughly convinced of that, but you don't know at what particular moment you came to that <laughs> acceptance. 